Hi, I'm Rosie O'Donnell, and this is how it got better. I was born in 1962 on Long Island, New York. Grew up there my whole life. When I was three years old, apparently I walked across the street, knocked on the house next door and said, do you have anyone here who's three? And the mother said, I do. And I walked in and met my best friend, Jackie, who now lives five minutes away from me in the next town. And she's like my sibling and her mom took over mothering. My mother died when I was 10 years old. My father said, your mother passed away. And I remember thinking, what does passed away mean? And then all the adults started to yell and then there was chaos and then and then it's kind of a blur of confusion. Things that were taken care of when my mother was alive were suddenly not, and there was no one there besides children. My father got up very early, went to a job he hated, came home sort of late, and was angry the rest of the night. And then in order to deal with that, he drank. There was definitely um, no talking about your feelings, which I think is very, very damaging. You know, the Irish Catholic, you can only talk about how horrible things are, you know, like the potato famine. and. Oh, Uncle Jimmy's drunk in the Irish stew again. Pull his head out before he drowns. You know? But right around that time, a new girl moved in to the school named Lori Shackner. And she was very, very pretty. And she looked very much like Barbara Streisand to me in What's Up, Doc, and pretty much that's all it took. And I went over to their house, and the mother and father, they were so typically Jewishy, lovingly, mishpuka -y. I'd walk in, they'd kiss me on both cheeks and say, oh, Shayna Madel, look at you, look at you. I was just like blown away by the physical touching because that does not happen in the Irish house. There is this world of love and emotions and feelings and there was something about it that I loved. And you know, I think the first girl that I loved was Lisa Shatner, but I didn't even know it because, you know, I was young. I was so starving for affection and attention of any kind that it didn't necessarily awaken me sexually, but you know, I wanted Lisa Schachter to kiss me on the cheeks a lot. Let's just say that, you know? I didn't have a lot of struggling going on then, like, was I gay? I knew I was a tomboy. I knew Christy McNichol on Family was somebody who I was very similar to. We both wore overalls all the time. We both played basketball. On Facts of Life, so there was Joe, Nancy McKeon, right? There were tomboy prototypes that I related to, so, and, and I didn't necessarily identify as gay. I just knew, oh, I'm a girl like those kind of girls. When I was in seventh grade, the English teacher said, Roseanne, where's your homework? And I said, I didn't do it. One of the girls behind me, Kathleen Kennedy, wrote a note that said, Mr. Kaplan doesn't know that Roseanne's mother died and now she's sad. And she passed it around and then I read it. And then I started crying. So I ran out of the school and I ran and I hid in the woods. And they get my brother to come with a megaphone. Roseanne, get out of the woods. Roseanne, come out of the woods. And then finally at nine o'clock at night, they found me and I didn't go to school for like a month. When I went back, this teacher, Pat Maravell, had heard about this little kid who ran away from school. So she requested that I be her assistant in eighth period. And she loved me back to life. She nurtured me, she gave me what it was that I needed, which was to be seen, to be cared about. And she taught me that, you know, love makes a family, not blood. She was a, a feminist and um, introduced me to some amazing writers and opened my mind in terms of what was possible for women by being a, a, a women's liber. I remember she gave me a book called um, Our Bodies Ourselves and it was full of everything that you needed to know about your body if you were a woman. There was a chapter that was about lesbianism and it was called In America They Call Us Dykes. That was the title of the chapter. And I remember as soon as I got that book home, I ran up into my bedroom and I looked up that chapter. Now these were words that weren't commonplace. Like you would never really hear people in 78, 79, 80 talking about gayness or talking about homosexuality. The first time I said it, I was probably 17. I was in my car, I had gotten my driver's license and I turned the radio off and I'm by myself. And it was uh, an AMC Pacer, it's my favorite car. And I said, 
I am gay. I said it out loud. I am gay. I, I'm gay. I'm definitely gay. I am a gay person. I'm a, a lesbian. A lesbian, I'm a lesbian. There's a dividing line. March 17th, 1973 is the first sort of lightning bolt that shattered my life into sections, right? The next lightning bolt was the day my son arrived, May 25th, 1995. It's like, those are the two defining moments, right? When I stopped having a mother and when I became a mother. It was the rights of gays to parent that did lead me to coming out. These two nurses in the AIDS ward at the height of the AIDS epidemic in Miami took a infant and raised this boy since he was a baby up until the age of 15. They applied to adopt him and the state of Florida wouldn't let them. So I joined the ACLU lawsuit to bring attention to the Lofton Cruteau case and that's how I ended up coming out because I felt as though the rights of gays to parent is a basic human right and civil right and states are not supposed to raise children. Humans are supposed to raise children. You know, I've got four teenagers, and the teenage years are hard for every kid, no matter what your challenges are. So what I would say to that kid, and what I do say when they reach out to me through social media, is, you know, to believe in yourself and to find one adult who cares. Trust that person. One consistent, present, loving adult. That's what saved me. A teacher who was not related to me. I don't know where I would be without her. And absorbing art has always saved me. Anything you can consume in the terms of art will help keep you buoyant and above the water because art is what heals all of us. All the girls who played all the teams, a lot of them were gay. Oh, that's a stereotype. Oh, that's a, no, 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 listen. If you could throw from third to first, pretty good chance you might be a lesbian. I'm just saying. I know there's an occasional amazingly gifted athlete like Ronda Rousey who's not gay, but on the whole, and I think she's heterosexual. I never asked her. If she's not, um, I think if Ronda and I had dinner and I was a little younger and I had abs, there could be hope.